I've released the seal on the door to the summit. Go to the Temple of Fire. I wish you well for the battle soon to come. Be safe. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass! Last time, we reached the Isle of Ember and seen that the place had burned to the ground. I think it's still accurate. There's not really a lot of flammable materials on these buildings. They were smart to craft them out of stone so that there'd still be ruins left when it would eventually burn to the ground. They knew what they were signing up for when they built their city on a volcano, okay? They understood. Okay, we can reach the Temple of Fire at the peak through here. Come on, tap the door to open it, Link. I would give her crap about that, but I'll be honest, I've had times where I haven't played this game in a while. I think I had one time where I hadn't played in like a month and then I came back to it. First time I came to one of those doors, I thought there was some sort of item that I didn't yet have to open it and I just ignored a very important feature for a very long time. I'll tell you what that is whenever we get to it, but I'll just say that it was a pretty bad door to not open. Look, the volcano is erupting! Watch out for falling rocks! Just because they knew what they were signing up for when they built their city doesn't mean I knew what I was signing up for when I came to it! We got new enemies in the red tektites! Just jump attack them from far away to approach and they go down in three slashes! We're in the big leagues now! I also want to go over this way because I never did go up here. You can access this from town and get a red rupee from that tree. Also blue tektites. Hold a moment. Always wanted to say that. It sounds a lot snobbier than hold on a moment. Oh. <laughs> Whether I believe something that has already come to pass is up to me. It's okay, Gossip Stone. I'm not a politician, so you don't have to worry about that. Back up where we're supposed to watch for falling rocks. Another one of you. I guess I don't really need to be fighting every enemy, but it's fun. I love doing jump attacks. That must be the temple, but the entrance is sealed. Okay. We'll see if we can find any way to deal with this. Nothing? I guess grass wouldn't really be the answer on a mountaintop like this. Inside of the chest is another red rupee. Just swimming in money already. And you can't read it. <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? When I was a kid, games never did this. Yet Suddenly, in the last 10, 15 years or so, suddenly every game is like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we told them they couldn't read a sign from the back? I think it'd be funny. Ugh. Does some game designer out there think this is cute or something? I don't know what it is, but it just it bothers me. Blow out the flames to open the way ahead. Now we can enter the temple. We did it, Link. Let's go face up to that power of darkness. Do you like little tiny uses of all the DS's features? Get used to them. We're gonna be seeing lots. Welcome to the Temple of Fire. Ugh, so hot. Oh no, there are flames everywhere. You better not touch them. Don't go and burn yourself. Like, you know, when there's fire out there, the first thing I think of doing is going and giving it a great big toasty hug, yeah. Good thing you were here to tell me that, because that's the very first thing I think of when I see fire. I just want to go over and touch it. You know what I mean. Uh, we got fire bars right away, a la Super Mario Brothers. Got some choo-choos that I'm surprised have not dissolved into vapor, and we got a sign. Don't make haste. Make note of the one safe path. Pull up our map, and... <laughs> There, now my arrow looks like a serial killer drew it. Hmm, I wonder what that means, but let's make note of it. Go ahead, copy that path by writing it on your map in case we need it later. Just in case you didn't see the great big button that said map right there and didn't read the text that was telling you to, oh, I don't know, write it down already. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a problem with tutorial NPCs unless they're repeating information that was already in the game and it's very clear that it was added at a later time because it's so inconsistent because there was already something telling you to do that and I thought, oh wow, that's really cool and then they just kind of spell it out for you even more and you feel like you're being condescended to and it takes the coolness out of the, out of the sails. Got a small key, which is good because we just saw a small key door. Hop it. And here we are. If we didn't go the correct pathway, yeah, that's why you gotta write stuff down. 
Granted, I think when you get close enough to him, it reveals the pathway just fine, so it's not really that big of a deal, but it's still kind of a nice way to introduce this mechanic that you're going to be taking notes on your screen, you're going to be, you know, just kind of writing stuff down on there and telling yourself the way forward in situations. Do a spin attack. In the fire bar room, that's where that staircase was. And now we move on to another floor. We're moving fast. Oh. Waiting, waiting. Kapow! Thank you. I don't know why I keep saying kapow when I use a sword. That's kind of more of gun lingo, but I guess it was the closest thing that they had in this day and age. It's not like trains have been invented yet or anything. Not for at least another hundred years. Off we go. And it's another defeat all enemies to advance, but we have new enemies. These are Zolds. Or if you grew up with bad player's guides, green slimes. Kind of an unfortunate thing about this game is that the only official text that a lot of things in Phantom Hourglass ever got was from the Prima official strategy guide. As you can imagine, it's pretty much wrong about everything. So there's a lot of weird official names and inconsistencies there. We got the boomerang! This item follows the path you draw on the screen. A boomerang. Know how to throw it. First, tap the item icon to equip the boomerang. I don't tap the icon. I hold down the L button to instantly switch to my sub weapon. It's a great use of buttons, very convenient, makes these items way more fun to use, just being able to whip them out like that and not having to worry about whether or not you have tapped in the upper corner and then done stuff. This boomerang is very free. You can do all sorts of trickety trick stuff with it. And it might even be the boomerang's greatest appearance ever. It's so good. I guess you can't really whip it out super fast, but you can do all sorts of just fun stuff with it. And it's so controllable. You can hit multiple targets really easily, which is something that's not really possible. This is somewhat of a precursor to the beetle from Skyward Sword, which uh, in the development of that game, they were going to incorporate the boomerang from Phantom Hourglass by making it all controllable but they realized from kind of a first person 3D perspective it didn't really feel like a boomerang anymore and thus the beetle was born. This is a transitional phase. Boing boing, there are no treasure chests on this floor. Thank you for telling me. Sometimes it can be more helpful to know that you've done everything than it can be to just not know, like, okay. I, I actually prefer being told when I have done everything to any other scenario, like being told, oh, there's still things left to do. Because it's always so like, ooh, do I still have something I gotta go back for? You know, did I really get everything here? I appreciate your services there, buddy. Um, you can stun the yellow choo-choos, not having to worry about their zappiness at all. And it just generally makes a lot of different enemies way easier to deal with. This is a shortcut back to the beginning. There's the fire that I gave a hug to. Sorry, fire, if I, uh... The problem with doing that is that... You know, I appreciate you, Ciela. I, I get it now, okay. You were trying to warn me that if I gave a hug to one piece of fire, I'd have to give hugs to all the pieces of fire. And then I'd be dead. You were looking out for my good nature. These are bubbles! They are invulnerable to damage as long as they have those flames around them, so you guessed it. Got him on the rebound! Hit him with the boomerang, and then follow up attack with the sword. Does anybody know why these are called bubbles? I'm willing to bet maybe that in an earlier game, they actually looked like bubbles, and then the enemy behavior was just taken by these skulls, and they figured, well, let's not make two different enemy names because we already have something that does this. Let's call them bubbles. And yet they made it even more confusing than if they just called them, I don't know, flaming skulls of doom. Uh, these are fire keys. We're just piling on the new enemies here. You can't hurt them with the sword, but... Oh, gotta turn around. They die instantly to the boomerang. So yet another unique trait of this boomerang is that it actually does instant kill certain enemies. Keep that in mind. Don't get close to them, and they will not ignite you. Boing boing. The number of treasure chests left here is one. It'll cost you 20 rupees to see where the treasure lies. I don't need you. I'm sure I can find it no problem, because, you know, this is the first dungeon and things are fairly linear, so uh, I'd be a little bit sad if I actually didn't get the chest, and now the pressure is on. I've just created pressure for myself, because you're going to scrutinize me if I, um, if I don't do it. Nah, you wouldn't do anything like that, right? I hope. Hop over. That looks a little bit out of place. Give me that. And now it doesn't look so out of place anymore. Another 20 rupees, there is our one chest. I like that, pressure's off, and I help make the room more aesthetically pleasing. Down that goes, so before going onward, we'll head back over that way and see what was behind door number one on this floor. 
Aha! I'm not gonna get confused by you any longer. Let's just scribble. Ah! I missed every shot. Come on, do it. No. Uh, I'm not gonna have a hard time on this. Come on. I'm just getting as much mileage. I'm gonna miss every shot again. Screw this dirty rat! Not literally, please. Thank you. It's another enemy that an instant kills. Your heart is very artifacted when you see it up this close. It's no wonder you were so unhealthy that you died in one hit to a boomerang. Now, gonna slowly go through here once again, go around the fire bar, and over there we go. Gotta hit that. That, nah, too bad you can't turn at angles. This is a 3D game, didn't you get the memo? Doesn't seem like you did, because you only ever faced 90 degree angles as though it was a 2D experience. With that key, we open the way to yet another floor, up to 3F. Now, oh, oh, no, 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 come on. Get rid of you. Oh, one of confusing name. We have two candles to deal with, and I just wanna say, the most miserable experience that I have had playing this game, easily. Well, I don't know if I wanna say that, because it's a pretty bold statement for what I'm about to say. Was having to blow out these candles while on an airplane. That was how I first experienced this, and it was hell to get the to get it to work. Just because of all the background noise and how DS and 3DS microphones will tune themselves to how much background noise is in your area, where you have to make noise that is louder than what's currently being picked up by the mic for it to register as controls, just to prevent it from accepting inputs in loud areas. It's annoying and just so awful, and it made this dungeon take me. I'm not lying, I think I like had to like form a cone around it and blow with all I had, just cup my hands around it and blow, and even then it was only reading it a little bit where Link would blow for a couple of frames and then he would just stop it. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, yes, Yella, I'm aware, I'm aware. It's okay, you don't have to waste your vocal cords on me. I know what I'm doing, and so does everyone else, even if they don't know what they're doing. We're gonna make it so X marks the spot, the most extreme letter of the alphabet. How fitting for pirates. That's why we claim the letter for ourselves. Got a small key. But yeah, do not do this in loud areas. It is terrible. I think I was, another thing I tried was rubbing my thumb on the screen. I was there forever. I, I wouldn't doubt it if it actually took me an hour to clear this dungeon and the majority of the time was spent doing that. So please have mercy on yourself. Don't suffer the same fate as me. I don't need to know where the chest is. I was just curious if there were any. Whoa, what's this? It looks so ominous. I say it does. Looks like a really annoying gameplay mechanic. Hello, all right, so uh, I have not acknowledged it yet, but those, this uh, torch right here that's throwing fire at us, it's typically known as a torch trap, yet in the Prima official guide, I refuse to accept that this thing's official name is Face Lamp. I have no idea how that even makes any sense, how anybody would come to that conclusion, or think that that's a remotely fitting name, because do you see a face? I don't see a face, maybe it's, Referencing the fact that it's facetious, but even then that's kind of a strange like, I'm sorry, I refuse to accept how wrong Prima Guides is all the time. It, I don't know, I, I feel kind of mean though because I, I'm not like celebrating people losing their jobs or anything. I understand that people are just doing their jobs, but when Prima Guides announced they were shutting down last year, I saw so many people being like, oh no, that's so sad. Like I grew up on these things and Personally, all I could think of was just all the times that I bought a Prima Guide and was incredibly disappointed because of how bad they were and how wrong the information was all the time and all the misinformation that was spread around forums that me and my friends always had to spend time correcting when people were asking like, oh, how do you do this? And we're like, that's not in the game. And they're like, oh, but my guide said it was. Yeah, sorry. I go on many rants about it. Skyward Sword in particular, that guide had some really bad misinformation that burned me and I think that was the last player's guide I ever bought, so um, thanks for getting me off of player's guides altogether. You killed them for me, not the internet. Over we go. I'm gonna call this a trier bar, because there's, you know, three of them, and it's try. Hey, look at distraction, the boss key, it's a huge heavy key. Now, I'm guessing the tides washed away our pockets as well without taking off our clothes because we gotta carry this thing. 
I don't hate this mechanic because it's not really that hard getting to the boss door with this in this current situation. And I don't think there's really any other time that this comes up where I hate walking with it either. It's just kind of an added inconvenience that just kind of leaves a sour taste in the mouth is more what I feel about it. It's like if you were going to make it that easy, why even make us do it in the first place? That's kind of how I feel about it. Up we go. Four floors in a first dungeon. Kind of wondering if that's a record. Step into the blue light to return to the temple's entrance. You heard it? And Ciela finally didn't repeat it. She's learning. This temple protects the spirit of power. Ah, time to fight Ganon already. All right, well, short game, but I liked it so far. I can feel an evil presence lingering at the top of these stairs. Be careful, okay, Link? Blaz, master of fire. If you want a high point of Phantom Hourglass, I got one for you. The boss fights are exceptionally creative. While they're charging up an attack together, they are vulnerable allowing you to hit them with a boomerang. You want to look at the top screen, see the number of horns, and hit them in the correct order of one, two, and three. Then you can let loose on the larger complete form of them that's weaker for some reason. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but just wait for them to charge up, get in position with your boomerang, go one, two, three. And this is cycle number two. It's a pretty good first boss fight. It's a bit more involved than you'd expect than just kind of slashing your sword at a guy who's out in front of you. He teleports around, you just gotta react to where he's going. Hopefully jump attack over to him to get in some extra hits. Oh, or he can just pop up right next to you and slap me across the face. I'll have you know I reported the last bad guy who did that to me for child abuse. Don't you know how old this Link is and how cute he is? Look at his stubby little legs! Look at his stubby little legs! short fight, but it's a pretty good first boss. Not supposed to be overly hard, not supposed to be overly involved, and it's clever how they have you looking back and forth between the two screens to get different information and putting it together in your head. Something that could have only been done with such convenience on the DS. This one was pretty simple and short, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Spirit of power, I serve the Ocean King. I owe you thanks for defeating that evil wizard. You broke the seal, so now I'm free. Look, Link! It's the spirit of power- Ciela! This must be what Astrid was talking! <laughs> Please, help us. We need your strength. I was locked away with the Ocean King years ago. But now I can't feel the Ocean King's presence. I wonder what happened to him. If I come with you, maybe I can find out. If you need it, I will gladly lend a hand. Just so long as you're not gonna repeat everything Ciela says too so that we hear every tutorial three times, you got yourself a deal. Leaf joins the group. With a name like Leaf, it's no wonder his powers were weakened by being stored in the Temple of Fire. The bad guys are being strategic. As is tradition, opening the chest gets a heart container. We increase our life by one and refill all our hearts. We're stronger already.
The volcano has stopped erupting, Link. I'll bet it's because you defeated all the monsters, Link. Come on, let's tell Astrid. That's the fire temple down, and somebody new to join our group. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we go see Astrid and see what she can tell us about the spirit that we have saved from the Temple of Fire. See you guys then.